So this is a young man with a mature cataract. We don't know why. Um, he's not atopic. As far as we know, he's never had steroids. So you have to be a bit careful not to go too wide with a capsulorexis. So I tend to try and spiral it outwards like this. It's going very slowly. And then every now and then you have to pull it backwards just to get the trajectory right. Uh, his mother noticed this, she says, a couple of weeks ago. My guess is it's been there for a lot longer because uh, it's quite a dense white cataract. So with these paediatric cataracts, the capsule's much more elastic than usual. And the vision blue helps to stiffen it up a little bit. And the hydrodice section, please. And then I use the FACO probe. Some people just aspirate paediatric cataracts, but sometimes they're much harder than they look. And um, I tend to use the FACO probe because it's a very good aspirator. And if I need any FACO power, then it's there. Okay, so we'll just try the IA now, please. Are we on IA? Cortex. Cortex, that's great, thank you. So you notice how the anterior chamber has deepened a lot when I put the infusion in, and that's due to reverse pupil block. And I'm going to use what's called the Chioni maneuver, described by Bob Chioni, to lift the iris up, and that uh, shallows the chamber again. So it looks to me like he's got a, some sort of breach in the posterior capsule here. There's a little, um, it looks like another membrane there, doesn't it? So maybe that's why he's got a cataract. He may have had a, a breach in the capsule from trauma or something. It's difficult to know what to do with that bit because I'm not sure if it's part of the posterior capsule or, or what. So I think what I'm going to do is put an, a lens in the eye now. 24.5 MA60AC. So that may be the posterior capsule that's broken there, and that may be the anterior hyaloid face that's behind. Doctor, we have a question from the classroom wondering about the membrane and if you're going to leave it or take it out. Yeah, so this, I think that there, that line there, I think a tear in the posterior capsule. I think this is posterior capsule here, and underneath is probably the anterior hyaloid face of the vitreous. So that explains why he's got a cataract. So what I'm going to do is put a lens into the bag. He's already got a hole in the posterior capsule, which is what I was going to do anyway. I was going to make a primary posterior axis. So when the lens is in, I'll just try and extend that hole behind the lens. 
So we've got the C cartridge. Thank you. Has that got a helon in? I tend to use these lenses in children because the legs are thinner, the haptics are thinner. And sometimes uh, in children, the, the capsular bag is too small. So these lenses are not designed for injection, but they can be injected through a C cartridge. You'll see the cartridge has a C on it here. So the tip is a little bit wider than the D cartridge, which we use for adults. So you have to make sure the, uh, the trailing haptic is underneath the injector like that. And then you also have to... No, that's not going to work. Hang on a minute. I'll have the Macphersons again, please, quickly. That's better. You have to try and make sure that the uh, leading haptic is unfolded in the tip. So you can see at the moment it's curled up. And you just unfold it like that with a Sinsky hook. And it, it will make some very odd acrobatic turns as it goes into the eye. And it's a little bit of a tight fit, the C cartridge in the eye, but it usually does go. And then as the lens goes in, you have to rotate the cartridge. So that haptic's in the bag. turning the wrong way. It's that way. Okay, so the leg needs flipping over. In a moment. That's it. And then I'll have the Rex's forceps, please. So this is a little bit tricky because you've got to go under the lens. Extend that Rex's. So you try to remove the membrane under the IOL? Yes, I think this is a, the posterior capsule. I was going to do a primary posterior capsular Rex's, but he already has a hole in the capsule, so I'm just making it bigger. The question is, why don't you just leave the postcapsular membrane and do a laser YAG later on? You could. If you leave the posterior capsule, it will opacify at this age in all patients. So if he's um, able to sit at the laser and cooperate, then you could do that. But he wasn't a very cooperative patient. So my anticipation was that he would probably be better off having this done. Because he'll need, probably need a laser within a year, I would think. And he's not terribly cooperative, so... Nice just to get it out of the way. So in an older child, I would leave it. I, you can leave it, you know, if they're eight or nine and cooperative, you can just do a YAG laser later. But why you put oil, oil inside first? Um, sometimes if you don't, then what happens is um, the leg of the implant can go into the vitreous. There now is, is the posterior axis. Why would you not consider putting a multifocal IOL in a child of this age? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I would. I, in the UK, that's, that's exactly what I would do. There's not a lot of data about how well they work, um, but it is something to consider. You also have to consider the various problems you can get with multifocals. They're not perfect lenses by any means, but certainly that, that's a consideration, and I think we haven't got them here as far as I know. So it's simply for that reason. If he wants to read with both eyes, he'll have to have a, a plus lens in front of the left eye. Why don't you use GM Sinolon to make sure that there is no vitreous in the capsule? Because at this age, the vitreous is very thick and it doesn't tend to come into the uh, anterior chamber. It's very formed and solid like a jelly. And so they don't tend to get vitreous coming into the anterior chamber. I just want to know how old is the patient? Uh, seven, seven, seven years old. Yes. So he either had a congenital defect in his posterior capsule or he must have had trauma, I think, because um, that was why he had a cataract in this eye. He's obviously got a, a tear in his posterior capsule. So you think that this is a congenital condition? Maybe. Um, my guess is it might have been due to trauma because 
Firstly, his mother said the cataract came on very quickly. And the other thing is the other eye is completely normal. And there's no other reason why he's developed a cataract that I could find. So it would explain everything if he had a recent trauma. So I'm just going to give him half the dose of subconge. 